Now to finish up the dead blows. Oh, good Lord. This was my first dead blow splitting ax. This was the concept. I basically just made a giant wedge out of steel and it's got lead in the middle of it. And it is like 15 pounds, way too heavy, way too steep of a, <laughs> of a wedge. But this was gen one, dead blow splitters. And then gen two, I said, okay, I need it to be a little bit thinner. So I made this one. A little more movement of the babies. There's a, it's, a, it's a longer canister so the babies can move a little bit more and it's a little bit more gradual of a wedge. Still pretty heavy. This is gen two of the dead blow splitter. <laughs> then it brings me to the next concept, using an actual ax and then adding the dead blow on the back of it. This is gen three of the dead blow splitter. <laughs> Probably the goofiest looking one and it's very back heavy. Not a great design, but that kind of started, okay, I need some tool steel for the front because those were just mild steel, just cheap steel that I found. And uh, that's not good for an ax. You need hardened steel for it. So I just basically found a cheap head, welded on the back, welded on some sides to give it a wedge and uh, really tested the concept of a proper ax with the dead blow. And then that led me to Todd forging this one with the canister. And then it led me to this one, the spear point with the canister. Then this spear point just turned into the splitting axes alone without the canister. And they're just the freaking best. I don't have one on me right now. They're actually shipping today. Okay. So now we're getting into the axes that I restored myself. So this was a hit. Oh shit. So this is a high test Tasmanian from Australia and I put it on an ebony wood handle. This is where I started to start carving my handles. So I take a chunk of wood, draw it out, start shaping it and I put it on a head. This head I just cleaned it up, put a nice little uh, edge on it and uh, yeah, this is just a great little Tassie. This is a, a little Japanese axe. It's a hatchet. Again, I carved the handle out of Actually, black cherry that I cut down here. I dried it out and uh, made a handle out of it. A little bit of a goofy shape, but it feels freaking nice. And the funny thing about this one was I got it on eBay and I thought it was way bigger. Like, because I saw this profile, I'm like, holy crap, that's a good splitting profile. I want to buy that and make a, make a nice splitting axe. And I get it in this tiny little envelope and I'm like, uh, okay, so that's a lot smaller than I thought. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> And uh, yes, so I just put it on a little hatchet and it's perfect for kindling. I love it. And then years later, I actually found a Japanese uh, splitting axe. Quite long, quite thick, great splitter. And I hand carved this out of some ash and swings, quite great. This one is just a test axe. Uh, this is Collins, uh, but it's a Jatoba handle that I didn't spend much time on. But if you look, it has pretty bad grain orientation where the grains are going this way rather than up and down. So uh, yeah, this is just a test handle, but it's one of my axes, so here it is. And then this is actually from a friend as well. I got this head from him. It's a Jersey Kelly Axe and Tool, so Kelly works. He restored the head. I just did the handle out of an oak tree that fell, but just a gorgeous freaking head. Uh, Burr and Bevel, Joel, he's the man. Check him out. So this is a, a Finnish axe. It's a collared axe. It's a, a, a Bilnas. And uh, it's in a very interesting axe head and it's quite hard to make a handle for it because they're strange looking. So this was the one I carved. It looks very goofy, <laughs> but it feels quite nice. And it's not, not a bad uh, axe user, actually. This is uh, a little Wetterlings and uh, once again, Swedish. And I made just a tiny little uh, Osage orange handle. I like to use exotic woods because they have quite, quite decent uh, attributes, just like hickory, if not better. Hello, kitty. Whoopee. Ha, this is LeBron James. Um, yes, so this is just a nice little uh, Wetterlings hatchet. And then probably my favorite wood to carve and use as handles is bloodwood. It is naturally red and just a gorgeous, gorgeous color and super strong, super flexible and uh, very, very hard. This is a Walters Tasmanian made in Canada. And uh, yes, it's great. Here's another bloodwood. It's on a long, long 36 inch handle. And this is just a plum uh, that I restored. This one's actually for sale. It's on my Etsy. But yeah, this is a great, great ax. Once again, super long, flexible. You can really get some whip when you're splitting. Uh, great freaking ax. 
Once again, an, uh, another near and dear from a friend of mine, she sold it to me. This is a Collins Legitimus, and I think it's a South African pattern. So it's absolutely huge. Like the eye is bigger than normal, and it doesn't have a flat pole that's got a rounded pole on it. But this is out uh, Osage Orange as well that I carved, and this thing is a freaking beast. <laughs> I think and then I think we're getting into my favorite one. This is the Black Raven, uh, a very sought after axe head. Once again, put it on Osage. They make bows out of this stuff so it can bend, but not break, and it is just great. And then this head is a Tasmanian Black Raven. Look at that stamp. I just love it. One of my faves. This is just a cheap little, uh, Cheap little head, Lord, a little hatchet, and I put it on a Whiskey River handle. They have some great freaking handles, super quality, affordable, uh, and this was just a no-name hatchet that I tried hanging, and uh, yeah, nothing special. This, I believe, is a Collins, one of my first hangs, actually. Pretty big head, and I put it on a small handle. Uh, it's like a saddle, saddle handle or something like that. Uh, but yeah, Whiskey River handle again, but this is just goofy. <laughs> It's, I never use it. <laughs> and then we have the chopper. This is the chopper one. Uh, I have a few videos on it, seeing if these actually work. The concept is, as the ax goes into the wood, these little mechanisms spread out the wood so it splits easier. And I have my thoughts on it. I don't think it does that much. That's why I uh, cut the springs, took these mechanisms out, and then split without the mechanisms, and it split just the same. So it's a little gimmicky, but uh, nonetheless, it is one of my axes. And then here is the hand axe. <laughs> this is fabricated by the metalist. He made one for a YouTube video, and then he started mass producing them and sent me one, and this is just the, the coolest, coolest freaking axe. And it works, it splits decently well. I put it on a Whiskey River handle, uh, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a hand. <laughs> Another one of my favorites is the Plum Champion Axe. This is a pretty sought after axe. Uh, it's got a really nice stamp on it. Put it on a Liam Hoffman handle. And uh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. One of just a collector's item, essentially. I don't really use it much. I have used it. I always swing my axes at least once, but yeah, it is just absolutely gorgeous. And then last but not least, this is a True Temper Paul Bunyan axe, my bucket list axe. Uh, love Paul Bunyan here in Minnesota. He's kind of a legend. Um, you can kind of see the stamp on it. It's not great, but I got it for a really good price on eBay. I found it. Um, and then I put it on an amazing handle that uh, Nick Birchtold made. Uh, he CNC's them. It is a booby axe. <laughs> Or eyeballs, if you want to be family friendly. They're eyeballs. They're not boobs. But uh, yeah, that is just, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so those are all my axes. Um, quite a few. And then I have some axe heads that I, I restore. So these are all my axe heads. We got the hatchet heads up here. And then various, various no-name no names, um, Grand Forest Brook, some Collins, some Kelly Works, and then, oh yeah, this one I made out of a, a chainsaw chain. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, those are all my axes. I have quite a few, um, and I've had quite a few more. I buy them and sell them and restore and sell, and so I've, I've had a lot of axes go through this shop, but these are the ones I currently have, and the ones that I kind of will keep around for a while. I sell them every once in a while. Um, uh, but yes, so that is my axe haul. <laughs> now I have to uh, clean up this mess. <laughs> I hang them on my wall, and then I hang them on the uh, Whiskey River axe bells, which is just a great way to uh, keep your axes in, in order. But I hope you liked it, and uh, follow me for more, and subscribe, or do whatever you want. And uh, yes, here's to another year of collecting axes and uh, sharing my enjoyment with all of you. Ha! Okay. Hello.